Hi guys, so today I have this painting that was just released on Everyday Original this morning and I wanted to show you a little bit about how I go about staging a painting and getting it ready to be viewed online and to be shown in my social media channels and places. Because having the painting itself is one thing, but being able to reach a audience in a digital format is an entirely different thing. So once I have the painting, I stage it and I use elements that I can find outdoors. I go outside and find lots of plants and things and I, I set up a, a nice photo where you can see the entirety of the piece within a setting. And of course I also have other photos in different formats. I have just the image itself, which is just the straight scan photo merge of the piece. And then I also usually try to take something at an angle where you can see the frame and all the details of it because sometimes you don't really get to see the, the, uh, how the frame is put together when you have it straight on in a straight on angle like this. So those are the three types of images I try to take whenever I complete a piece and have it framed. There's that initial one with just the piece itself, straight on photo of the frame within a setting, and then an angled photo with the frame as well. So let's go outside and I'm going to show you what I look for when I'm thinking about elements that I could use for staging a piece like this. So one of the first important things to think about when you're planning on staging a painting, a piece, is to think about what your art is about. And for myself, for my work, much of it is inspired by nature and so it feels natural to have a much more natural element around the piece when I am taking photos of it. Now where can you get materials like that? For me, I don't really have a very large yard. I mean this is it, what you see here. <laughs> so there's actually not a whole lot and yet there's a lot that you can find throughout the seasons to really add color and interest to a photograph when you're taking a picture of a piece. So I, I just, what I do is I just go outside usually and I find whatever I can that's in season. Um, I, I think about the colors of the painting. I think about what colors I'm using at that time. This piece, it has a little bit of reds and golds in it. It has a lot of greens and blues. And so I want to think about those colors as I choose things. Now this bush over here has these beautiful red berries. There's not a whole lot of color and punch in this time of year in California. But we don't have the brightly changing colored leaves. So I have a few you know, leaves here and there. These are some other ones that I've used in the past. Um, I remember pulling off some of these leaves and just using them as accents against a white background with the transition of some of the other leaves that were changing colors like these. Here we've got some of these which are a little bit of green and a little bit of red. That adds some variety. Oh, here's some more. Oh, these guys are good. So, you know, I go around and I just, I just kind of see what I can find in the garden. Um, ivy is also another one of my go-tos. These guys, especially with the bright green younger shoots, the larger leaves sometimes are a little bit too big, especially with my small paintings. Um, although, you know, every once in a while, the large ones will be good. And you see these holes in there, and that can also add some bit of interest. So really, you know, I just, I just go around, find some stuff, and take it over to my workspace and try to see what I can do to arrange them into some aesthetic format. So once I'm back inside my studio, I have to set up my space where I'm going to take the photo. And there are a number of different options. This is just a piece of white foam core. You know, it's something you get at a craft store for about 99 cents or $2. And it gives you just this perfect white neutral background if that's what you want. Other times, if I want something darker or colored or toned, I get a piece of fabric. And, you know, if you set up the fabric with some nice little textures to it. This can make a very nice background as well, you see. Um, or you can smooth it out completely, make sure you have no wrinkles. 
cotton doesn't really make a good surface for that because you can see too many of the wrinkles and you can see the, the weave of it as well. But sometimes you can find some cheap pieces of other cloth. I do a lot of sewing, so I generally have a lot of that lying around. Other times I use my deck, which is this worn wood texture, and that's what I did for the Shadow Bunnies photo that I showed you initially. Now, any of these can work. It just depends on the piece that you're using. For example, if I have this piece and I don't want to have any of those other types of distracting elements. I don't want a dark background on this because the frame already is dark and I wouldn't be able to see the frame itself if I did anything like that. And, you know, these leaves make some excellent little bits of uh, contrast to it and it goes so well with the hummingbird itself because the hummingbird is this reddish green color and then having these little bits of leaves really brings out the tones. So I can set things up like that. Um, I don't know if this might be too large for this piece. And then you have to think about what the frame is that you're going to be taking the picture in. Now what you're seeing is the entirety of my space here right now, but when I take this photo, perhaps I'm going to be doing it at an angle like this, or straight on, or cropping in close, or doing it larger. All of these are various elements to take in mind. I also have pieces of driftwood that I've collected over the years. These could make for uh, a nice interest, interesting way to lean it up against. Or this piece of antler that I found at a flea market. Uh, this is like a little replica bird skull. Of course, you can also use your tools, your materials for how you created the piece. So this is another favorite of mine to be using my palettes, you know, my watercolor palettes here. Uh, you know, these, these are nice and small ones, make, which make them very ideal for fitting into the frame of a small piece that I'm trying to stage. When I have my large palettes, for example, these, you know, this isn't going to work so well with such a small piece because it's going to be taking up too much of the frame. It's going to be too distracting. It will be seen as the more important element rather than the piece itself. And that's one of the things to keep in mind. Your painting is the most important element in the staging. You don't want to overshadow it. You don't want to put too much into the picture so that it becomes the lesser element. And so, you know, in the case of this piece, this piece is a fairly simple in terms of what it's offering in background and things. So I don't want to overpower it. I want to make sure that the piece is the star of the show. So perhaps in this case, I would limit things to simply a paintbrush perhaps along the bottom edge, um, aligning it right there, and perhaps this along the top edge, and maybe this coming in over the side, and a couple of these little leaves on this side as well. And then when I take my photo for this, I'm probably going to crop it in tight like this. I'm not going to have the palettes in this piece. I'm going to leave those out. Maybe here's this greenish red leaf because I like how that contrasts and, and really boosts the uh, visibility of the green red in the hummingbird itself. And there we go. I'll take a photo like that. Now, as I said, a lot of natural elements work really well for my paintings because of my subject matter and because of what I am depicting. It might not be the best way to portray your own art, but Think about what's in your piece and the colors and what's around you and what would serve to make your paintings the star of the photo. Now once I have my piece photographed, I take it into Photoshop. And for this section here, I'm going to give you a view of my screen capture. What I'm doing initially is setting up some guidelines. These are not part of the image. These are just for the purpose of straightening things out. You can see my frame is not quite squared up. It doesn't really line up with those edges that I've drawn out with the guidelines. Um, and to do guidelines, all you need to do is you reach up into the ruler and pull down and it will immediately drag a line out from there. Now once I have these guidelines in place, I can start playing with the skew and try to square things up so that the 
frame is perfectly aligned. It takes a little bit of fiddling, playing around with the corners, and getting everything to match up. Now once it's aligned, I set that, and then I'm going to crop the image a bit because I don't need this full frame, especially when it's going to be something that's viewed on Instagram. You really want to have something that is in a square format for the optimal viewing and even for Facebook as well. Wide images don't really work well because they get shrunk so much. And so generally I stick to a square or a slightly skewed into profile format. So once I've cropped this down, now I'm going to start playing around with the background a little bit because I want the picture itself to really pop the, the artwork itself, the framed artwork to pop out from the surroundings. I don't want it to be overpowered. And so I'm going to select my background. Uh, you see, initially I, I didn't quite select accurately. So I'm going to do this over again. Just go and select my frame itself manually instead of drawing a square. So this is just to select out my mask and get around that little berry that's hanging out in front of the frame because that's part of the background as well in a way. Now once I have that selected, then I use levels to modify my background a little bit and to really pull out the tones. Uh, I, I want to push it into a lighter sort of less uh, less attention grabbing sort of sphere. I'm sorry, my screen capture isn't catching my windows so you can't see what I'm selecting in the options. But then after I do the levels, I also play with the brightness and contrast and I really wanna push the white of the background up. I wanna get that into this nice clean white look so that it is minimally distracting to, as I said, the star of the photograph, which is the artwork itself. And so I play with the contrast a little bit there. And once I have it all white, then there's my finished piece. It's all set to be pushed out into social media. I'm gonna crop it down a little tiny bit more so it's a nice, tight photo that that way you get to see more of the artwork and less of the surroundings. And there we go.